Hey hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. So in the last episode we tackled our nemesis, the Platinum Line, and we did manage to get it all finished off. I've been working on this for yeah, a number of hours between videos, just trying to make sure that everything works. And uh, well, it doesn't. <laughs> it Well, it kind of does. For the most part it does, but there's a few bottlenecks which we have to address here at the beginning of this video. Don't worry though, we will address all the failure points of this system, but just after the last episode, I did place a storage monitor to basically measure how much platinum dust we had. You should be seeing that right about now, and I don't remember what exactly that number was, but at this point in time, we're currently over 3,000 platinum dust, with still 10,000 platinum combs to process. So we do have these uh, automatically being processed, which we make from the bees, of course. However, we are out of hydrofluoric acid, so let's add that to our pin list. That is one thing we have to address for today. Yeah, but 3000 platinum, that is excellent. Plus we still have 13k platinum metallic powder dust to go through. Um, on another note, we're also at nearly 100 osmium and we still have the combs to process. Iridium, we're at 1300, over 1300 iridium, plus the combs to process. Uh, yeah, ruthenium, 4k. What else is there? Rhodium. So yeah, for the most part, I'm really glad I went all out on the platinum line. And of course, there's still some more upgrades we need to do. Uh, like upgrading the blast furnace coils here, still they're only nichrome. However, you've probably noticed by now, but I did also give some aesthetic upgrades to the chemical area and platinum line. I added a roof over the plat line machines to bring it in line with the chemical factory. I also switched out some of the flooring blocks and painted the power cables underneath, which is something I didn't do last episode. Additionally, I mentioned that I wanted to move some of the chemistry machines around, and that is also now done. So uh, yeah, basically the middle block of machines, I wanted to bring them two blocks closer together, just to bring it in line and make it consistent with the plat line machine placements. And uh, yeah, that was such a nightmare to do that. <laughs> move a whole block of machines just two blocks back. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're actually doing it, it was a nightmare, but it's done. And walking around here now feels so much better. There's much more space between the machines. So I believe everything is filtered correctly. I did double check these machines like three or four times. Most of them are just uh, missing fluid output space, which means that buffers are full, um, which is a good sign. Uh, that is very good. That means things are working. But we'll see if we run out of any of these things. Polytetrafluoroethylene, epoxid. Acetone, all this stuff is very important, so we need to make sure these machines stay running. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy I took the time to actually clean this area up before we move on, and it's ready for more machines to be added, which is what we're going to be doing today, probably in this space here, and then we'll expand this way for more chemistry machines. I would like to space things out a bit more, because with all the tile entities in one location, the FPS is going to take a hit. Not that it's an issue right now, but yeah, I think, I think actually what I'm going to do is remove this floor. Yeah, I think basically where the roof stops, I'm just going to remove the floor and then we'll extend it out like even further this way, a couple of extra chunks, just to uh, space things out more. So one of the things I noticed while working in this area is that we were out of raw oil which is uh, being received by an ender tank and then into a distillation tower, steam cracked and then distilled again for various chemical byproducts. And that essentially means that our oil drilling rig had stopped in the overworld. After going to investigate though, it basically had just mined all the raw oil in the chunk, so all we had to do was move it to the next chunk over. And I was reminded while I was down there that I still hadn't crafted that spare ender tank which supplies benzene to the gas turbine to power the oil drilling rig. So I decided to go ahead and craft us another ender tank.
Wait, hold on. Some of you are maybe thinking, wait, that's a, that's a funny looking ender tank. And yes, it is a funny looking ender tank. That's that's nothing like an ender tank. That's an ender chest. <laughs> it was very late at night, okay? I crafted the wrong thing and... Oh, no way. I just crafted an ender chest and not an ender tank. What am I doing? I, Yeah, I realized way too late after it was crafted. So we wasted some nether stars. We wasted some IV components, but... Uh... Hey, I mean, at least we have a spare ender chest now, which we can make use of somehow. I don't know what we'll use this for. Begrudgingly, though, I did go and farm some more withers for nether stars, or wither stars, or whatever they are. <laughs> and I did uh, craft another ender tank, so that is now being automatically fueled. Or, yeah, the, the oil rig is now being automatically fueled. And we've now uh, backed up again on raw oil. Which is a good sign. That means that the machines have filled their output buffers, I think. Yeah, not enough fluid output space. That's a good message to have on the machines again. That probably means that we're filled on methane or ethylene, one of the two. Yeah, we're capped on ethylene storage. All right, anyway, so moving on for today. As you saw, I did set up uh, three more large chemical reactors, which we're going to filter here together. And this is to address one of the shortcomings of the platinum line. One of the deficiencies is nitric acid. And um, it, nitric acid is also used in phthalic acid. And just as a reminder, we need phthalic acid to process our advanced bee combs. Um, one of them is in hydrochloric acid, one of them is in hydrofluoric acid. Uh, phosphoric acid, we're going to leave for another day. And then phthalic acid, which uh, we're going to hopefully make today. But yeah, this is going to start with nitric acid production. So nitric acid is a... Uh, well, we can actually go two different ways for nitric acid. If we look at the recipe here, there's a circuit 24, which is normally the way you want to go for uh, chemical recipes in large chemical reactors. Normally, circuit 24 gets you the most direct route to the output. So in essence, nitric acid is oxygen plus ammonia, um, but we're actually not going to do this recipe, despite it being the fastest way to get nitric acid. Instead, we're going to use circuit 9, so when we do circuit 9, um, rather than just getting our nitric acid, which is, and some water, which we would basically just trash, um, instead of doing that, we get nitric oxide. And nitric oxide you can combine with oxygen to get your nitrogen dioxide back. So you get, you recycle some of your nitrogen dioxide, and we actually need nitrogen dioxide for phthalic acid. So that is basically the reason why we're using that circuit 9 recipe. I did go ahead and craft some hatches here, so let's get this uh, chemical reactor set up. We'll do one thing at a time here. Let's see, we need some input hatches. That's not how you spell input. Input hatches. LV should be fine, but we can... I guess we can use quadruple input hatches, and then fluid export buses with some capacity cards. Do we have any of those? We do. Yeah, so we need some covered cable as well. Okay, so breaking this down, let's do nitric acid in the bottom LCR. Yeah, let's do this in the bottom LCR. So we need also water input, so we can use a reservoir hatch. I did go ahead and craft one of those. Let's put that here. This just has to be anywhere on the machine, and the reservoir hatch will just supply water. Like it's an input hatch, but we don't have to supply it externally, it just stays full of water. So as for power, we're running uh, EV for all three of these large chemical reactors. Next, we need our... Input hatch, right? Yeah, input hatch for nitrogen dioxide, circuit number nine. And we'll get this plugged in. Actually, how many channels do we have over here? 23 of 32 in use. So we should have enough channels to make this work. Okay, so this device is online, but we're not gonna see the hatch fill up because we actually don't have any fluid space for nitrogen dioxide yet, since we don't make it anywhere. And I cannot type and talk at the same time. <laughs> we have regular nitrogen. But we don't have dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, so we'll have to fix that in a second. Number nine. I like to do things just one at a time here, and this is basically what the plat line consisted of, is just uh, setting up these machines. I'll give you a, a sneak peek here, and we'll do all of this on camera. <laughs> so this is uh, nitric acid, right? So the next step in this production is to make nitrogen dioxide, and to make nitrogen dioxide, we need to mix oxygen with nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is oxygen plus ammonia, right? Yeah, wait a minute, this is one to one with ammonia, right? Are we gonna end up losing ammonia doing it this way? Like, would it be more, I'm just thinking, would it be more efficient to set up a circuit 24 recipe for nitric acid 
and then just set up separate nitrogen dioxide production. Because you can also do nitric oxide plus oxygen. And you can get this from... Well, I guess, I guess it all just boils down to ammonia plus oxygen. Yeah, again, the reason we're doing it this way is for talic acid. Because in talic acid, we're, we'll come back to this shortly, but... Essentially, we need potassium dichromate dust, and whenever you make potassium dichromate, you also get nitric oxide. Um, so rather than electrolyze back into oxygen nitrogen, which is, I think, the ammonia recipe, right? Ammonia is nitrogen plus oxygen. So rather than electrolyze to chemical react again, I thought we would just recycle it into nitrogen dioxide and then use that recipe for nitric acid. But any eyes got me spinning in circles, so I'm not actually sure what the best way to go is. Should we just stick to our guns and uh, continue doing it this way? I think we will. Okay, yeah, we will do it this way. So we need oxygen and ammonia, and we can't put that on uh, on the larger cable there. So we'll have to extend this down and do that instead. So we need oxygen gas here. This will be another circuit nine recipe. So oxygen plus ammonia and ammonia we make in the plat line over here we make ammonia right here and ammonia is one of those things that i knew we would need externally so i actually did add it to main fluid storage we should have a fluid tank on the end here for ammonia that's carbon monoxide that's hydrochloric acid here is ammonia we're full on the super tank however this is going to be a big bottleneck because it's used in various chemical reaction recipes uh even things that we haven't set up yet. So I think we're going to have to upgrade our machine here for ammonia. But fortunately right now all the buffers are full. So we can request it in the machine here. And use it for nitric acid. Okay so again just to recap where we are. We're trying to make nitric oxide. Which is I've decided we're going to use this circuit number 9 recipe right here. Ammonia plus oxygen. You can see this is 100 buckets of oxygen though. Which means we need a large input hatch. Capable of hand handling... 100 buckets and I think the EV one is the minimum we can do yeah this is 128 litres or 128,000 litres and we need minimum 100 so EV is the minimum hatch that we can handle for this for oxygen and ammonia I think was yeah ammonia is only 36 buckets um, so we can do like an HV input hatch for that one that handles 64 and you know what I just noticed that this is a little short. It's missing its hat on the top, so <laughs> maybe I will actually... Uh, yeah, let's actually move this up a block so we can put the output hatch on the bottom. We're not going to waste ammonia, though. We'll take it out of the hatch. And yeah, we'll replace it on the top here. Okay, so we have our inputs again for nitric acid. Or what is this? Nitric oxide? Nitric oxide, which ha then has to be combined with more oxygen for nitrogen dioxide. So actually we should share we should share the oxygen one, which means that it has to be in the middle slice, so it can be used by both machines. Or maybe since this takes so much oxygen, we should just add another in. Yeah, you know what, we'll do that. We'll just add a second oxygen input hatch for nitrogen dioxide, which only takes 9 litres, so we can get away with a LV hatch for this one. It may turn out that we want bigger hatches, but I think for now we're going to be okay with just the LV. We'll monitor this and see if it is too slow, but yeah, I think it should be fine. So we want also oxygen here, right? Perfect. So now we have the inputs. We need outputs for this as well. So this is where we have to ask ourselves a question. We can either use a regular output hatch to basically control the machine so that when the buffers are full, it doesn't make us any more. Or we can also make use of the ME output hatch, which as we know, will infinitely cache fluids, right? As long as it's connected to AE, it will infinitely buffer fluids inside. But that also does mean it will consume all of the input. So looking at the first recipe for nitric oxide, we don't want to consume all of our ammonia because we'll need this elsewhere. So for this one, this is going to get a regular output hatch into an interface, and that way we can control the machine. Let's do... Should we do EV for this? Gives us 36, so we can do HV. Let's craft an HV one. Let's craft two HV ones. Oh, you know what? For this nitric oxide, we should actually be using circuit number 8 because circuit 9 gives us water, which we would have to deal with. Otherwise, it would uh, clog the machine. So we want to switch this to circuit 8 instead. 
That way we only have to deal with the nitric oxide, which as far as I'm aware isn't used anywhere else. So what we're going to do is instead of sending it away to an external location only to bring it back, we're just going to send it into the input of the next machine. So we can lock the output hatch here for nitric oxide, and that has to be sent into the input hatch again to make nitrogen dioxide. So this will be the circuit 9, we need another input hatch right here. So we're going output from the top machine into the input of the middle machine, mixing with some more oxygen and that will give us nitrogen dioxide. And then the nitrogen dioxide, uh, is that used anywhere else? It's used in dinitrogen tetroxide, combustion promoter, I think both of these are for rocket fuel stuff, along with uh, this stuff, which I think is for Kevlar. Um, so in that case, we're going to add it to main fluid storage. So let's get a, a super tank. We'll need a fluid storage bus, which of course we don't have crafted. We can request one though, and some white covered cable for this. Actually, we'll make two fluid storage buses because we also want to add space for nitric acid, the finished the finished product in the bottom LCR. We do actually have space for that in the, the platinum line subnet, but I want it also on main fluid storage because I want to make use of priorities. I'll uh, go over that in just a second. But this first one here is going to be for nitrogen dioxide. Let's make sure we lock it. We don't want void overflow. We want to filter the fluid storage bus. High priority for this one. Nitrogen dioxide, bidirectional. And plug it in. I also just realized here that we're going to have to switch the bottom input hatch for minimum HV for the nitric acid recipe, right? Because this is a... Uh, 27 bucket input of nitrogen dioxide and I'm also now realizing that we're gonna have to switch this input and output situation here um, <laughs> I, We actually do want to go back to main fluid storage first so that we can make use of priorities I know that I'm probably confusing you guys. I'm confusing myself and this is why I don't do a chemistry on camera <laughs> It's a big disaster Because things end up changing and then you end up like confusing yourself and the audience and everyone is just confused. So we want to do nitric oxide, oxygen gas here. Okay, I think I've got it. That also means that we have to add another fluid storage bus here, right? For the nitric oxide, not just the nitrogen dioxide and also nitric acid, which we added. We also want nitric oxide here to be stored in main fluid storage. So again, same situation, bidirectional. Priority and filter the storage bus. I did filter this one, right? Yeah, I did filter that one. Plug it in. So ignore what I said earlier about keeping the fluids local. Everything is going to be sent back to main fluid storage and then sent back here. Okay, so one final recap. Apologies for the huge derps here. <laughs> We're getting derp full today. Um, but yeah, ammonia plus oxygen gives us nitric oxide. That's sent back to main fluid storage. Then both is requested in the input hatch. That gives us nitrogen dioxide. So we're only missing an output hatch here, which we can do at HV. Yeah, let's do it here so we can add a fluid interface, dual interface here to basically, yeah, grab all the fluids, send it back to the tank. So that's all we need for that multi-block. We can complete the multi-block here. And then finally we have our nitrogen dioxide here plus water from the reservoir hatch in the bottom and this one we want to switch out with also two regular output hatches here because we're going to get two fluid outputs from the bottom i'm hoping we have enough channels here still with all these extra devices we've added because in the nitric acid recipe remember we also get our nitric oxide which we want to recycle right and we want to use this one first before it makes any fresh from the ammonia from the middle lcr so we want to make use of this one First of all, which means we're going to add a super tank on site and we're going to have another fluid storage bus. This time on low priority and extract only for nitrogen dioxide. Lock the super tank, lock the output hatch for nitrogen dioxide. And this output hatch here is going to be for nitric acid. And then dual interface on the output hatch here which we don't have. We should have another one crafted though. We have one left. Yeah, dual interface right here. Yes, okay, we did it, we did it. <laughs> we got there in the end. As long as everything has a channel, hold on, let me just count this out, one, two. Yes, everything has a channel. So now we're good to turn on the machines. So we wanna do our maintenance. 
which by the way, thanks for reminding me, you can actually click on the maintenance hatch. You don't have to enter the GUI and then put the toolbox in here. You can just, thanks Thumbcraft. That's like the 10th egg you've given me today. <laughs> yeah, you can just click on, directly on the hatch. Um, so yeah, we should be ready to turn these machines on. We wanna lock the recipe. The first one is gonna make us the nitric oxide, right? Mm-hmm. No valid recipe found, but I think that's just because we're a bit slow in importing the oxygen gas, which is okay. It will eventually catch up to the buffers. We do have one acceleration card in there. Um, yeah, so nitric oxide, that's gonna run through so much ammonia, another egg. Next one is gonna be for, yep, there it is, nitrogen dioxide. And then finally, nitric acid. I think it's just waiting on input right now. Um, and it's, that's just because the insertion is a bit slow. Nitrogen dioxide and nitric acid. How many times have I said both of those phrases today? Count your chickens. <laughs> okay, so coming back to the priority situation that I mentioned, we do have nitric acid, which is being recycled here in the platinum line. And we also do have fluid storage for nitric acid, I believe here. Yes, and this uh, ME drive is on low priority, which means that it's gonna take from here first. So anything that we make out of the plat line, it's gonna use first, and then it's gonna pick from any extra, which we make from the extra ammonia. Um, and I believe also this uh, fluid storage bus here is should be on low priority, which is not, but we will add it to low priority. This is again the uh, interface between main net and the plat line subnet. So yeah, we make both the nitrogen dioxide and nitric acid in the platinum line, and the platinum line is gonna use it from there first before taking it from here. Oh yeah, and maybe just for a bit of added context, we use nitric acid here to make sodium nitrate. So nitric acid will be requested in this fluid export bus. And we also use nitric acid in the mixer over here at the platinum line to make aquaregia. So that's just a bit of extra context to give you an idea as to where these things are going. And then, yeah, it's also gonna be used, of course, in phthalic acid production, which will be around here somewhere. So if you guys made it through that painful segment, I'll try to condense it as much as I can. <laughs> but I know some of you guys like some of the, uh, some of the in-depth, uh, that was another egg. Some of the, uh, yeah, keeping things on camera, but I think that's enough pain. I I'm gonna set up phthalic acid right now. Yeah, you guys have seen enough of Derpfold, I think. Well, well, that really wasn't so bad. And we now have phthalic acid on passive. And uh, yeah, 45 seconds a recipe for nine buckets. It's actually not too bad. The server's been on for quite some time by now. So actually we're catching up here and yeah, we're about a quarter full on main fluid storage of phthalic acid. It looks like also our 
nitric acid is catching up to the buffer as well as nitrogen dioxide which is pretty cool just to bring you guys up to speed on the recipe here it's 1,2-dimethyl benzene with oxygen gas and potassium dichromate there is a second recipe here using naphthalene and lithium but it's really not worth doing it this way you're much better off doing 1,2-dimethyl benzene because this is a bit of a rabbit hole we need to distill sulfuric coal tar and then this is uh, coal tar oil and sulfuric acid <laughs> and coal tar oil is coal tar through a distillation tower we have to deal with all these byproducts as well and coal tar is another coke oven so it's a bit more of a rabbit hole whereas with 1,2-dimethyl benzene I mean oxygen is very simple 1,2-dimethyl benzene we actually make out of our distillation towers making benzene regular benzene which we use as fuel around our base so as you saw in the time lapse, I did move the 1,2-dimethyl benzene tank to main fluid storage here in the void. And I also switched out the P2Ps which collect the output from the machines uh, with dual interfaces. So that way it sends all the fluids into our storage system here in the new base. And we're now buffering here 1,2-dimethyl benzene which is being sent into phthalic acid production. As well as uh, our phthalic acid here, two new super tanks at main fluid storage. So yeah, overall pretty simple actually once we were at this point, once we had nitric acid. The uh, final part of this recipe is the potassium dichromate dust, which is, uh, well I wanted to use this recipe but this is ZPM. This is a bit of a shortcut recipe but for now we have to use either saltpeter or potassium nitrate. I went with saltpeter because we get this from bees. It's one of the reasons I set up the salt bee. We also make saltpeter from salty root which is one of our crops up here and is incidentally how we're also generating chlorine as a primary chemical insert for a lot of these chemical processes here. Um, so yeah, salty root gives us saltpeter. We also get it from ore, I believe. So we have a, a huge abundance of saltpeter. It's used in the platinum line as well. So yeah, 200k. We're going to have plenty of that for thalic acid. So yeah, the recipe here is saltpeter plus chromium trioxide. We also get our nitric oxide back. Um, which we send into nitric acid production and then chromium trioxide is just chromium dioxide and oxygen and this is just uh, chrome dust plus oxygen gas and chrome dust I saw that we were going to need this actually chrome dust is used in stainless steel and chrome dust we also make from the bees I don't know if I'm going to be able to find them but we do have a chrome bee here somewhere that's diamond it's in one of the hot biomes here tungsten platinum oh yeah here here we make the chrome bee and the chrome bee gives us chromium combs and chromium gives us purified chrome which we convert into chrome dust. So I've been planning ahead here for quite a number of episodes and this is finally the culmination of all that planning. We can finally start putting things together and uh, yeah we've now got our thalic acid for the bee comb production or the bee comb processing which we'll do this episode. But um, first of all I also want to talk about this LCR which I moved from the overworld and this is a LCR making us radon. A pretty dangerous recipe, we use some radioactive materials and I did forget about the full hazmat suit when I was taking down the machine, um, but fortunately I survived it, um, I, we did have the talisman to cure the debuff. Radon is very, very important for us, um, especially now that we're entering, uh, or yeah, crafting up more IV stuff. We use radon in cubit wafers, which is mixed with indium gallium phosphide. Indium gallium we make uh, right here. Indium dust is mixed with gallium, and gallium we also make from bees. And these cubit wafers are used, of course, in circuit production, mainly EV circuits and above. Radon will also be used for not that, we don't have that set up yet, we don't have an Aquadria set up yet, just yet. Radon is also used as a blast furnace catalyst. Um, we can use it to cheapen some recipes, although we're not quite at the point where we have such an abundance of this to use it in the blast furnace. Um, however, we do use it for quantumize and quantum stars, and these are used in some IV components, field generators, sensors, emitters. We use these for the ender tanks and chests. Um, we also use the quantum eye in something or other here. I think it's the... Oh, it's also used in EV components as well. It's used all over the place. We, we need a lot of... Uh, we need a lot of radon, and it's a fairly slow recipe, actually. So, um, basically, what we've got here is a electric furnace HV, we also have an interface which is going to supply uranium and I think it's going to be 238 dust, not 235, I think it's 238 we want here. 
Yeah, and for now I've got an auto workbench which converts the full dust into tiny piles. And then that is sent on another conveyor module here, which then is chemical reacted with air and plutonium-239. Now, plutonium-239 isn't so easy to get, so we only have, a, I think, 16 pieces of, of plutonium, which is in this input bus. Honestly, I don't remember how we got this to begin with. I think it's from, like, endstone dust processing or something like that. Um, but it's not very easy to get until we have a certain tier of rocket. I think it's the tier 5 rocket to get to Phobos. Or was this how we got it? Phobos is a tier 2 planet, but I was thinking it was tier 5 um, to get plutonium-239 easier. There is plutonium ore, but I, yeah, I think it's... Yeah, plutonium, the plutonium vein is tier 3, which obviously we don't have the tier 3 rocket yet. All this to say, basically, our uh, plutonium is very precious, so we absolutely do not want to void it here. So, in that case, I'm going to actually add a needs maintenance cover on the maintenance hatch. I guess we'll do it on the side, and we'll do a howler alarm. As remember, if you have any maintenance issues, then there is a chance for the recipe to void. And we absolutely cannot afford that to happen for our plutonium. It's going to void the input and just not give you any output. And the plutonium here, if we check the recipe, is actually fully recycled. The only thing it costs us is air and our uranium-238, which is an ore. Uranium, unlike plutonium, we do have access to from tier 2 planets. And I think you can also get it from thorium in the nether. But yeah, you, uh, plutonium is a fully recycled product here. It comes out as dust, and then we smelt it in the furnace and send it back into the input bus um, to recycle the recipe. So the only thing we're missing for this recipe is air, and we were using compressed air cells, which is just uh, compressing empty cells. Yeah, this recipe here, you can, set, you can empty the air cells into an input hatch. However, now that we're in IV, we can actually... Uh, invest in the air intake hatch, which is similar to the reservoir hatch. Instead of water though, it's going to keep the multi-block full of air. And uh, I think I actually want to craft two of these. Uh, it needs another flu fluid regulator. I don't know if we have any more any spare circuits though. We don't. We're out of IVs. So let's uh, let's let's actually batch craft. Let's do like sixteen. And we don't have any gallium. <laughs> really, we don't have any gallium. I know for a fact that we have gallium because we have the gallium B. Yeah, 6,000 gallium. This, I believe, is just a regular furnace recipe. You know what? Let's go for 24 or maybe even 32 IV circuits. That's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, you can see here it, it does cost the radon. It, it costs a bunch of different stuff here. It doesn't look too bad, though. A bit of indium. We're out of uh, fiber reinforced epoxy resin, which we do have on passive. Uh, it's just that we're only buffering 64. I'm going to have to sort that because we're going to be requesting much higher quantities in the future. But this is something that is still automated in the overworld. So whenever we move it over, and in fact, I might not even passive it. I might just do it on demand because this is going to be so fast to fluid solidify. All right, 32 circuits are now crafting. Two of those circuits we'll use for the fluid regulator. Really need to get a more IV assembly machines and stuff crafted, but... There is going to be a better solution, uh, not just the, the single blocks or processing arrays. Now that we've fixed our platinum line, we can actually invest in what's called the precise assembler. And this is going to be our new medium term goal. This thing is very expensive though. It's super, super expensive. <laughs> it costs uh, a bunch of different materials which we haven't even looked at yet. Iridium reinforced plates and this isn't even the bulk of the cost. The bulk of the cost is in the casing. You need 79 minimum, well, I don't know if that's the minimum, I assume it's the minimum. You need a lot of these casing blocks, and each of these is, where's the cost here? ZPM machine casing, it's 3 for 2, and ZPM machine casing is iridium plates, 8 iridium per casing block. So that is, <laughs> it's super duper expensive, but that is going to be our new medium term goal, and that is going to be in the heart of our uh, auto crafting room. I say room, but it's going to be more like a complex, an auto-crafting complex. There's our second intake hatch. Yeah, we are going to need a massive amount of space for auto-crafting machines because we're not just going to have one or two machines of each type. We're eventually going to have like 16 machines of each type, 32 machines of each type. I don't know. <laughs> we need to uh, basically make it very expandable. Um, okay, so one of these intake hatches is going to go 
somewhere over here for polyphenylene sulfide, one of you guys mentioned that we can use intake hatches instead of oxygen. And I think it's in this recipe here. Let's see, sodium sulfide gives us the dust and then we chemical react that with, ah yeah, it's right here. We can either do oxygen or air. Um, so instead of doing oxygen here, which it looks like we're importing via this fluid export bus, we are instead gonna remove this device and the oxygen and just replace it with an air intake hatch. Can't block it though, so it needs to be rotated like that. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's one less machine consuming oxygen. Not that oxygen is a problem right now. I think that's the fluid we have the most of. We have uh, 60 million millibuckets um, and we generate oxygen from the crops, I think is our primary generation source. Um, but yeah, the second air intake hatch is gonna be for radon. We can put it right there, fill in the multi-block and it should form. Yes, perfect. Let's do the maintenance. Uh, lock the recipe and start. 37 and a half seconds for 100 liters of radon. That's 100 millibuckets, by the way, so it's not even a full bucket for for one recipe, which is why we absolutely need to keep it on passive. I did notice that we were a little bit short, actually, on uranium-238 dust. Um, I think we're down to our last few thousand. Oh yeah, we're under 3k, and that also needs a muffler hatch, for sure. That is, ab <laughs> that is obnoxious. That is very obnoxious. Okay, it did finish the first recipe, yeah, and then the furnace should output its contents back in and it should run the next recipe, perfect. Awesome. And it's gonna pull more uranium from our system, right? Craft it down into the tiny piles, insert into the input bus. And uh, yeah, radon is then gonna be sent, actually, where's the output? Yeah, it's right here, <laughs> oh yeah. We have a ME output hatch, which is uh, sending, sending the radon back to main fluid storage. Radon tank should be on the end here and we do have a million along with this tank which I picked from the overworld This is one of those machines that I check every single day I uh, log in and go to the overworld to make sure it doesn't have maintenance issues um, but it wasn't chunk loaded actually so uh, Or for a long time it wasn't chunk loaded um, so that's yeah another thing I don't have to check in the overworld and uh, One more thing we can tick off our list here and all this stuff. We don't need anymore. We can this is from the old setup. We used to use an LV furnace and an LV compressor, but yeah, there's not really any need for these anymore. And unfortunately, we don't have the disassembler in the pack, so these are most likely going to be voided. All right, so next project for today is going to be to fix the LCRs. We want to filter in uh, phthalic acid here and also run the recipe to process all the advanced combs. Um, I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update here on the subnet at the bees. And uh, yeah, check this out, we're now over 100k slag combs, 76k beeswax. <laughs> Remember, a lot of it is uh, once the combs are processed, the lower tier of combs, it's sent to ore processing, um, and then it's stored in mainnet, or sorry, in the ore processing subnet. So a lot of it isn't actually finally stored here, so this isn't everything that we generate from the bees. Uh, but things like Lapitron dust stay here, things like industrial TNT stay here, things like redstone, um, things like honeydew, which we're backed up on. I think we're actually filled on fluid honey now. We still have to find a solution for the stone combs and slag combs. Honestly, I might just void them. Uh, I haven't really decided yet, but for now we'll keep them in the system. We have space for them, so we might as well keep them stored. Iridium combs, this is what we want to process. The platinum should be processing, although we are out of hydrofluoric acid, which is still on our pin list. Or it was. Let's add it back there. Still want to get that fixed for today, but um, yeah, a lot of these other ones, like the uh, palladium, need the phthalic acid, and this is also an IV recipe. And if I remember correctly, we didn't actually wire in the power here for the phthalic acid LCR. It looks like we do have our phthalic acid in the input hatch already from the export bus, but we don't have any energy hatches on here, which means that we're going to have to craft some IV. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we might just bring these up to LUV power, um, we can't craft the LUV energy hatch just yet because we don't have the materials required or the assembly line to put it together. Uh, but we can double up on IV energy hatches, similar to what we've done to overclock the blast furnace, to uh, smelt our osmium to get the osmium B. So we can stick two IV hatches on there, um, but that also does mean that we have to address the power insert into this place. 
Right now we we went kind of cheap here and we went with 1x vanadium gallium cable, which we can see here is LUV power, one above IV, but it can only handle four amps of, I, of LUV. And we already transform down to EV multiple times here. We send eight amps down to the genetics lab and we also send some amperage to our centrifuge, which means that I don't think we're gonna have enough amperage here to run LUV large chemical reactors plus the EV one plus an HV1, which ha handles the hydrofluoric and hydrochloric acid. So we are gonna have to upgrade the cable into 4X vanadium gallium to bring it in line with our main power spine. That's, uh, I think it stops right around here somewhere at 4X. Right here, it converts between 4X and 1X. So we wanna take all the 1X away and convert it to 4X. This is gonna be very expensive, but like we saw, we do have a uh, gallium being made from the bees. It is a pretty long blast furnace recipe though, so maybe let's go ahead and request like another thousand vanadium gallium just to batch craft it. All right, so went ahead and switched out all the cable here with a 4X vanadium gallium. I also switched the transformer here. So this is taking, uh, well, it was it's now in half mode. So it's taking two amps of LUV down to eight amps of IV. So if we count this out, we're going to need one amp for here. This is a regular transformer. This is another high amp EV transformer. So this is two amps of IV. So that's three amps of IV power plus another, uh, well, each energy hatch is going to take two amps, right? And we need two, two IV energy hatches to make LUV power. So those are going to go on the machine. Uh, I guess we can put them on the bottom here. This is for our phthalic acid. So that's another four amps of IV. So right now we're at seven, right? Four five, six, seven. We need an eighth amp, which uh, will max out the high amp transformer here in half mode. So the eighth amp is gonna go to a EV transformer here, which transforms IV down to EV, then feeds this energy hatch and then transforms down to HV and feeds this LCR. I also went ahead and switched out this cable, which used to be EV power, it used to be aluminum. We're now running AX platinum cable, which is IV, and we can now easily afford this thanks to our platinum line. Uh, so yeah, this is IV power coming in here. We want to plug in the transformer. And then, uh, yeah, we should just be able to plug in the energy hatches, which are now crafted in here. And that should feed all the power we need to these machines. We're going to leave this machine at the top here for phosphoric acid. Um, I guess we're going to have to readjust this once we plug that in because that still doesn't have an energy hatch. Um, but we don't have phosphoric acid automated at the moment. Um, I guess maybe we can run it off HV power or even EV power. We have enough amperage to do that. But yeah, at this point, I think we're actually ready to go here once we sort the maintenance. Um, as long as I didn't miss a cable somewhere, we should have all the amperage and the power we need. And that also reminds me, I should turn this back on because it stopped when I broke the cable. All the alvearies should still have power because those are supplied externally from the, the generators here. So yeah, we should be able to request our, oh, we need another stocking input bus here. Yeah, stocking bus will go right here. Um, although saying that, do we have enough channels on this line here for yellow? Let's find out. I have a feeling we might be a bit short. We're using six. That should go up to seven once that stocking bus comes online. It's still at six. I think we're, I think we're actually all right for this. Orange I know is out of channels though. Orange were capped it on this regular Fluix cable. Oh yeah, the boss is already online. So here we want to request our iridium combs, right? Actually, let's just do one at a time. Let's just start with iridium. Yeah, let's just start with iridium here. So this is gonna give us acidic iridium solution, which is then chemical reacted for iridium chloride dust. We already have this set up. This is our plat line um, recipes that we're looking at here. And then iridium chloride plus calcium gives us iridium dust. So it should already be sent the acidic iridium solution that is, and that also reminds me, we need we do need fluid output space. So we need another output hatch. And the output hatch, we do want to go on orange. We don't want it to go back in the subnet because we don't handle fluids on subnet. Uh, so we need it to be on the orange, but again, we are out of channels here. So I'll have to replace some of this with a dense cable. Oh, and all this is gonna connect. I don't have any orange dye is the problem. So I've just been using the spray can. Which I guess works, but it does mean it all connects when we place the, the cable down here. And that just breaks the network because you're we're essentially joining the subnet with the main net, which is illegal. So, <laughs> yep, 
Yeah. And this junction here isn't amazing. I'm not really loving the way this is turning out, but uh, it's going to work for now. As long as the cables are plugged in, we can clean it up later. Okay, so the hatch here should now have a channel, and um, that's going to send all of the acidic osmium solution back to mainnet, back into any available storage. We're also going to get an iridium nugget from this, which is going to be sent in the output bus into the ender chest, which goes to ore processing. And for now, we're not actually automatically processing the nuggets. That's something we're going to have to set up when we move ore processing, because we don't have that functionality right now. So right now, they're just building up in the subnet. Which is fine, we have enough platinum that we can work with at the moment. We're up over 3300 at this point. So we'll deal with it eventually, but there's no need to rush into uh, processing nuggets. It's easy enough to uh, set up a recipe for if we want to do that. Um, but yeah, we should be able to turn on the machine now. We should see this running at LUV power as well. No valid recipe. Did I filter the combs? I didn't. Add the combs here. Now it should turn on. Yes, perfect. And it's 39 seconds. This should be LUV, right? Is it going to tell us if it's LUV? Yeah, right here. Tier is LUV, since we have double IV energy hatches. Um, so yeah, that significantly speeds up the recipe from the base um, time of 156 at IV. So because we overclock, we get, um, yeah, we get an increased speed on the recipe. Acidic iridium solution. Let's double check and make sure that is going to the platinum line. So over here, we should see one of the machines... Where is Acidic Iridium Solution? We're looking for an LCR which makes Iridium Chloride Dust. And that is probably over here somewhere. I think... That's Osmium. Acidic Iridium Solution. Iridium Chloride Dust. So it should end up right here. Um, it should actually be requested in the input hatch here. Ammonium Chloride plus Acidic Iridium Solution. And it's not being sent here. It's also not in the subnet here under Acidic Iridium Solution. Oh, it's still in the hatch. That's not what I expected to happen. Oh my goodness, I think I found it. I, that took me so long to realize what was happening here. I was running around. I think I'm going to cut all that out, but... <laughs> Essentially, what we're doing here, the interface between mainnet, orange is mainnet, black is subnet. On the interface between these two, um, this is the reverse, by the way. So this one reads the contents of mainnet to enable us to pull fluids like oxygen into platline. And this one... Um, we have it in reverse, so this one, the dual interface is on subnet, and the storage bus is on mainnet. And on this one, it's on insert only, and we have it on platinum concentrate, which also comes from the LCRs. So um, basically what's happening here is platinum concentrate is the only fluid allowed to enter the subnet um, as a fluid. So that means we also have to add acidic iridium, let's just make sure we have the, the right one here. Acidic iridium solution here to this storage bus. And now we should see the machine turn on. Once it receives the, once it realizes it can be stored here. Yes, there it is. Did you see that? It turned on. <laughs> it turned on. Okay, is it one? Yeah, it's one, uh, one bucket for the recipe. So that should actually turn on a few times. Maybe it's just that fast. Maybe it was, uh, maybe that was a few times because the recipe is... Yeah, 15 seconds at LV and we're running this at EV, so we get a significant overclock on a lot of these recipes. Lots of them are like under a second. Um, our bottleneck here in the plat line is just the inputs, which we're hoping to fix right here. Um, so yeah, that should be Iridium. I did turn off the machine here while I was troubleshooting. I didn't want it all like in... Yeah, I didn't want it all in the hatch here, which should now be empty. And yes, it is. There's no cached fluids. Let's see, we also have the Palladium comb, which also is going to be... IV, phthalic acid, um, but this gives us purified palladium comb, which is going to be sent to ore processing, and then it's eventually going to give us palladium metallic powder dust, which is uh, one of the starting inputs for the palladium line. Uh, instead of a fluid, it gives us the item. Okay, I know we also want the osmium comb, right? And osmium is also going to give us a fluid, as well as the osmium nugget. This is 190 seconds IV, and we have, like, thousands of combs to process here. So I might even add a second, well, I don't know, that's going to draw a lot of power because, yeah, going up energy tiers is like 4x the amount of power. Um, we do get perfect overclocks on the LCR though, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's that's going to draw a significant amount of power. In fact, let's turn this back on and we'll see how much average power draw that we're uh, taking from our battery. That should be something we can easily view here. 64,000, look at that. 
<laughs> okay, that's a bit concerning. 64,000. We generate 120,000. And... 75,000, oh my goodness, the LV machine, LUV machine is no joke. That is no joke. <laughs> Plus all the platinum line is probably turning on by now. Well, not even all of it, just the iridium part of it. Oh my goodness, that's insane. Yeah, we're drawing so much power. We might have to bump up our priorities and uh, think about upgrading power uh, pretty soon here above some other projects because we cannot afford to run out of power no matter what. Okay, so what else do we want to process here? Um, I think it was just iridium, osmium, platinum, palladium. I think also tungsten we want to process in talic acid. But I'm going to leave this because we have such a big backlog to get through. And I want to prioritize the existing uh, thalic acid to osmium and iridium. So yeah, we're going to also add our osmium combs in. And we also have to fix the acidic osmium solution. Which is going to be sent into the distillation tower, into osmium solution, and then chemical reacted for osmium. So it's actually a pretty short path uh, to osmium once we have the comb. Oh nice, and the LCR for iridium is turning on again. Yeah, since as we saw last episode, it's not so easy to get osmium. The ratios are not very favourable for us. It does take a lot of input to get a single piece of osmium. Uh, so let's also add osmium here. And again, these are being stored in discs here. Uh, we have our platinum concentrate. We have our palladium enriched ammonia. We have our acidic osmium solution. There it is and acidic iridium solution. So this is where the fluid is being stored after it comes out of the LCR. And I don't think we're gonna see these machines turn on because the LCR can only process one comb at a time. And it is like 40 seconds per recipe, um, more or less. I think it's gonna be locked on iridium for quite some time. It's, yeah, it's still doing iridium and there's like 11,000 combs to get through. Again though, it is the power, oh my goodness, 80,000. Did you see that? <laughs> it is power that's preventing us from adding more processing speed. So we want to be a bit conservative with our power. We don't want a situation like last episode where we ran out. Which, by the way, hasn't happened since. So I think it was just a chunk loading issue when we uh, took down the old plat line and unloaded those chunks. So we can also get rid of this sign. We don't need nitric acid anymore. We're presumably still capped on the, on the fluid tank. Radon is still going at a healthy rate here. Did I actually set this? Yeah, it's set at one issue. And the Howler Alarm should should notify us if we have any maintenance issues here. Anyways, guys, we are going to wrap up the episode here. I did also add silicon solar grade dust to our objective board, but unfortunately, we didn't get to that today. Nor did we get to any expansion. Um, so I would like to ask for your feedback in that, well, I'm still contemplating where we should put auto crafting, the facility for auto crafting. Um, for all of our uh, wire cutters, uh, cutting machines, benders, uh, electrolyzers, all that sort of stuff we want to do on demand. So right now the options are either, well, I'm still actually considering putting it underneath the hives. We can also go to this side here, opposite the platinum line, which by the way looks so cool. I think I'm still going to remove this platform here on the right hand side. Um, but yeah, we can either go like over here. I'm going to replace this though. If because I don't want the auto-crafting facility to be the same as the chemical factory. I want it to be quite a bit different. I have kind of a vision in my head. I want it to be, like, very vertical. Yeah, that's going to mess with the symmetry if you guys vote left. <laughs> so if we vote left, it's, it's going to throw off all the symmetry. Uh, which I'm not sure I'm ready to commit to yet. Down here is going to be for fusion and uh, some of the bigger multi-blocks. So I think, yeah, it's really a tie between going left or going north so maybe leave it in the comments um yeah maybe just to make it consistent either north or west west would be this way north obviously but underneath the hives and maybe even potentially out here somewhere again we do want to space things out to be considerate of the lag implications of lots of machines in one location but yeah i think that's going to do it for this episode i will monitor our power make sure we don't run out and also let you know if we're able to catch up to the backlog um, I think it's, I think we're probably not going to be able to catch up, but I mean, at least some passive resource, uh, processing is better than none. So yeah, I'm not really sure what's on the cards for next episode. I'm going to have to think about our priorities here. Is our power situation going to be enough? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for now, thank you guys once again for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.